Hello and welcome to this lesson. We now understand what is important during installation and deployment. Next, I want to talk about configuration. Why is this lesson relevant to every Performer Suite user, in my opinion? Well, because anyone who knows how the configuration works can ask the right questions. For example, if objects are missing, then after watching this tutorial, you will know exactly what the reason could be. We will discuss the following topics in this lesson. First of all, how can I connect my SAP systems? Where do I create the function modules? What needs to be done to perform cross-system analysis? What is the synchronization? And last but not least, how can the synchronization be automated? So many topics. Let's jump into the Performer Suite to answer these questions. Okay, so this is the initial view of the Performer Suite. At the bottom left, we can connect to the licensed systems. On this slide, you can see which connectors are supported potentially by the Performer Suite. So if you're missing certain connectors or object types, then it's because of your license and you would need to extend the license. The first step is to make sure that Performer Suite can connect to the licensed SAP system, which are listed here. For this to happen, a few things need to be done. So you have first have to insert some connection data and these connection configurations and many other things are presented in the so-called admin guide. So here you can see um, all the relevant configurations at a glance. So here you can quickly identify which configurations are still missing and check how many settings have already been made by clicking this run checklist button. The connection related options can find under um, connection data in this area here. And first of all, I would like to talk about the function modules. So I can click on function modules or I could also go to administration, connection data, function modules. The function modules can be created from the Performer Suite. So you can select the development system, for example, A4H in my case, um, and then you can set a prefix Z, for example. The function modules listed here are then created in, the, in a selected function group, which you can also select during the creation process. The function modules can then be transported to the other BW system in the system landscape. In our user manual, you can find more detailed information, detailed information about the content of the function modules. So you can click here on um, required customer function modules. And here you see the, um, the function modules. They are listed here and also the description. And if you need more information, you can even download this documentation of all function modules, we created doc documentation via the Performer Suite, via DocuPerformer here, and you can find here the content of the function modules, if you'll need this level of detail. So I can click here on check and connect with the system, and then I can also check if all my um, function modules are up to date. So from time to time, the created function modules needs to be updated after a Performer Suite update. So this can also be done here by clicking on check, and if we identify that the function model is not up to date, then it will be updated. So if you get an error message about function modules, you know exactly what the problem is and what the administrator has to do. Let's return to the admin guide. I can run a checklist, and as you can see, um, I installed or I integrate the function modules in one in my first BW system. So if you use BO, you have to enter three URLs here. So I can click on this BO connection button and then as you can see here in this area I can insert some URLs. So let me do this. You can find all the URLs in your CMC and then I can click on save. Um, so yeah, you can find them all in your central management console as mentioned um, and also here you can just check our user manual. It is explained where exactly you can find the um, different URLs. For example, here the RESTful web service URL and the applications and then RESTful web service and here you can see the URL. 
Okay, so let's continue with SAC. So SAC requires the so-called OOut client, which you can create in the SAC itself. So therefore, you can go to your SAC instance, you can go to um, System Administration, and under App Integration, here you can create a so-called um, client or out client and what we need first of all we need those authorization urls and also the token url and after this we need some information which are available if you create such an um, such a client so the um, the technical name and also the redirect URI and also the password so i would enter this in my um, sac instance so first i will copy the authorization url and the token URL and then I will insert all the other things like the technical name of the O outlined the, um, the client type and also the secret and now I can save this okay so there are two different OAuth ty client types. The interactive usage where a user login is required and also an API access where no user login is required. So here a machine-to-machine -machine communication takes place and you don't need an SAC user um, in order to do the login. Um, connecting to data sphere also works via the OAuth client. So here you have the same view. You can also create such OAuth clients and data sphere it works um, identical or it works similar as for SSC. For HANA, the SQL connection is used. So let me jump to the HANA area. So for this, um, the following parameters must be inserted. First, you have to click on SQL connection. You have to select the system. Then you can click on the SQL connection. You can then say whether it's a sub um, SAP HANA cloud or an on-premise private cloud. Let me just insert my connection data. So in our case, it's on-premise, private, then we have a multiple container, a tenant database. I can insert the port here. I can deactivate SSL, and then I can check the connection. As you can see, everything worked fine. Perfect. So now I inserted this also to, my, um, to the performer suite. Um, you can find all those parameters um, also, or where you can find them, or the places um, are um, described here in our article, in our user manual article. Here, if you click on HANA SQL connection, you're able to um, check where all of those information can be found. Here, you can also see a specific role must be manually created for your SAP HANA user to be able to interact with the performer suite. And we documented also the necessary authorizations and permissions your user need. And speaking of permission, BW users also need to be assigned certain permissions. So all this is listed. Let me just find it. It's ah, here it is. Necessary SAP authorizations. So here you can find all the necessary SAP authorizations um, your role need. We can connect now to many SAP systems. What's next? Now we want to synchronize the SAP objects. For this, we have to go to Administration and then SAP Sync. And we have to synchronize each system. So here I would start with my BW system. And as you can see here, you can select precisely which SAP objects should be synchronized and which shouldn't be synchronized. So here I can say, do I need, I can ask the question, do I need the workbench elements, the reporting elements, the process chains? Um, and in some cases, I can also insert some information. So I can select single values for tables and views or insert um, uh, the packages. I can insert the packages of the custom table name, for example, or exclude also values. Um, I can also integrate here for BPC the environment. Um, for ABAP stack, I can also add here the packages and so on. So you can decide which objects are relevant for you. And then you can start the synchronization. And after the synchronization, um, you will be able to find um, the objects in your entity grid here in this area. Um, if you synchronize the HANA system, or let me just synchronize the HANA system, then you will notice that it looks similar. So it's 
always the same procedure. You have to jump into the system and then you have to click on synchronization. And here, like you saw before, you can then decide which object types are relevant for you. And as I mentioned, if you see this filter button, then you're able to customize which objects should be synchronized. So let me start the synchronization. So my synchronization is um, started. Okay, and as you can see here, I'm informed here by the performer suite that the mapping between the HANA and BW system, system needs to be done. So there is still some missing mapping. So I can click here on maintain HANA schema mapping. I can create a new entry and then I can select, um, for example, my A4H system. I can add a HANA schema and then I can select the HANA system. This step is necessary because in some cases the information we receive from the system is not enough in order to identify dependencies between two systems. So that's the reason why we have to go to maintain HANA schema mappings here and we also have to do we have to do this also for SAC, BW, Datasphere and so on. So here I already maintained it here in this instance. So here as you can see I can set this up also for my mapping between BW and SAC or HANA, SAC, BW, Datasphere and so on. Okay, so for example, if you run away use analysis for a query and you want to know in which SAC stories it is used and no results are displayed, although you are sure that it is used in at least one SAC story, you can tell your admin that he has to maintain the mapping between the systems to get cross-system insights. Alright, so let's return to the synchronization. We have seen earlier how to start the synchronization. It is important that the synchronization is performed frequently. Let's imagine that after today's synchronization, many new objects will be, will be created in the next few days. These objects will be unavailable in the performer suite until another synchronization has taken place. To counteract this problem, it is possible to automate the synchronization with the so-called automation tool. I mentioned the automation tool in the last lesson and it is installed in the same directory as the performer suite instance. So in this case, you can schedule jobs and those jobs can be run uh, via Windows services. In the best case, you install it on a virtual machine and then the, perf the automation tool connects to the SAP systems and executes the synchronization. And um, this is how the uh, SAP objects are always up to date. So on this slide, you will find a few recommendations and facts. So install the automation tool in a virtual machine, open automation tool as an administrator and install and start the services, um, enter the usernames and passwords and check the system connection. You, have to, you can then schedule the synchronization here. So this is the procedure. And um, here you can also find some recommendations. But first I want to open the automation tool so that you saw this tool. Therefore I go to performer suite training and I will open this automation tool as an administrator as mentioned on the slide. Okay, and here you can see the automation tool. Um, as I mentioned, you have to install the services and start the services so that the in the background the synchronization can take can, uh, takes place and um, you can also uninstall the services and start the services um, and it's important that you insert all the login data, the relevant login data. So in this case, I have to insert here the password and the username for my A4H system. I can automate the sync and then I can here schedule the sync. So I can say, for example, please execute the synchronization every day at 2 a.m. I can click on OK and then I have to check, click on check and save. And after this, um, as you can see here, the synchronization is scheduled. So this is how you can automate the synchronization process. So now we can talk about the recommendations and facts. So we recommend the installation on a continuously running virtual machine. So you can schedule the synchronization for night, for example, so that the performer suite users find a daily updated state when they open the performer suite. The administrator, right, administrator rights are required. Um, the settings and automation tools should be set by a central performer suite instance. Do not use a real SAP user, but create a dedicated SAP user because um, if a user changes a password, then the synchronization is not possible because the login on the SAP system is not possible. 
The first synchronization should be done in the performer suite because we are using the settings you made in the perform in the synchronization. Windows services will be used that synchronize your SAP system with the performer suite in the background. We already talked about this and here you can also find the information for Citrix. All right, so let's summarize this lesson. In order to execute the functions in BW, function modules must be created for SAP BW and um, a HANA SQL connection must be set up and for BO, SS here and data sphere parameters must be entered to the performer suite so that the, um, the performer suite can connect to the SAP systems. A mapping between the BW, SSC, data sphere and HANA systems must be maintained for cross system insights. The synchronization extracts the head data of the SAP objects and writes them to the performer suite database. The automation tool can be installed during installation and can automate this synchronization procedure. The shown user manual articles can be found on this slide as well as other interesting articles regarding the configuration. Alright, thanks for your attention. Have a nice day. Bye bye.